Day Blue Trail Guide webinar. My name is Faye Augustin, and I am an Associate Director with American Rivers. I'm really pleased to have my colleague Lowell George, Manager of the National River Cleanup Program with American Rivers, um, to join us on our webinar series today. And she'll be discussing river cleanups, connecting communities to waterways. A few quick housekeeping things before we get started. Um, the first piece is technical support. If your connection is lost at any point during the webinar, please log in again using your unique web link and passcode that was provided to you when you registered with GoToWebinar. Additionally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available on Friday of this week for viewing on the Blue Trails Guide website, and I will also email it out to everyone um, who signed up for the webinar. If you have any other issues, you can see my contact information is at the bottom of the screen. Feel free to reach out to me with any additional questions that you might have. And as a reminder, um, this webinar series is on the internet, and so there is usually about a three to five second delay um, from slides moving from one to the next, so we appreciate your patience. We'll leave about five minutes at the end of the webinar for a brief uh, facilitated question and answer session with Lowell. Um, and while you're welcome to wait to, until the end of the webinar to ask any questions, um, I encourage you to ask any and all questions that you have during the webinar um, in the question box, which is located um, on the right-hand side of your GoToWebinar side panel. And you can ask questions there, and then we'll spend about five minutes at the end of the webinar um, going through those questions. And we'll um, include a transcript of all of the questions and answers after the webinar as well. Um, that will be available on the Blue Trails Guide blog, as well as sent around um, to folks on um, via email. So without further ado, um, I want to introduce my colleague uh, and friend, Lowell George, who is our National River Cleanup Manager and based in our Washington, D.C. office. So Lowell, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Faye, and thanks for having me on the Blue Trails Guide webinar series. I'm really happy to be able to talk today about uh, river cleanups and how they can be used to connect communities to their waterways and just share a lot of helpful uh, tools and tips on how to get your program off the ground if you're starting a new one or if you have an existing program, kind of giving some fresh ideas on how to uh, make them a little more exciting and keep them fresh. So before I go too much further, um, I want to talk a little bit about my background. Um, like they mentioned, I am the National River Cleanup Manager at American Rivers. And what I do is I help local organizers across the country with their cleanup events. And I'll get a little more into that throughout the presentation about what that actually entails. But we're just here to make uh, everyone else's jobs a little bit easier. And the ultimate goal is to keep trash out of our waterways and off our riverside lands. Um, so I've been with American Rivers for about three years um, and managing the National River Cleanup Program since the end of 2015. And it just keeps getting better. Um, I love talking to organizers and groups who are looking to start cleanups and experienced organizers who have been doing this for longer than I've been alive. So it's a really great um, place to be and a really great position to have. Um, I have a picture up there of the Hudson River in New York because that is my favorite river. I grew up in the Hudson Valley swimming at that very beach, unfortunately, because the waters weren't so clean at that time. But somehow my parents thought it was OK. Um, luckily, I survived. And now I'm happy to see when I go back the River is slowly making progress and slowly getting cleaner, but it always has a special place in my heart. Um, and this love of rivers is kind of what drove me to this work. So um, river cleanups, they can take so many different forms. Um, you can be on a boat. You can be on land. You can be in a park. Really, all of these efforts are great and make a huge difference in keeping trash out of our waterways. Um, and that's one of the main goals of American Rivers. Our mission is to protect wild rivers, restore endangered rivers, and conserve clean water for people in nature. Uh, we operate across the country in a bunch of regional offices, but we're headquartered in Washington, D.C. Um, 
and we do a lot of work, not just with cleanups, but we work on dam removals, hydropower relicensing, green infrastructure, riverside land protection, uh, you name it. If it relates to rivers and conservation, we probably have a hand in it. Um, so National River Cleanup is what I'm really familiar with. And um, in 2016, we had about 2,000 sites registered with our year-long initiative. Um, and um, across those 2,000 sites, we had about uh, 3.4 million pounds of trash removed by nearly 48,000 volunteers, which is just great. Every year, we're seeing an increase um, in volunteer numbers. And in some cases, we're seeing decreases in the amount of trash, but uh, that's generally not the case across the country. Uh, but what we're really excited about is that people are taking uh, initiative and getting engaged in their local communities to protect rivers. Uh, last year, we also celebrated the 25th anniversary of National River Cleanup, and we were able to mobilize individuals in every state to take a pledge to pick up 25 pieces of trash in 25 days. So we're really excited that we're just continuing the conversation, keeping momentum behind this movement, and getting people excited about rivers and keeping them clean. So if you're out there and you work for a government agency or a local NGO and you want to start a river cleanup program, or even if you're just an individual who wants to get together with some friends to go clean up your local river, we have some resources that can help you do that. So a great place to start is the American Rivers website. Um, if you go to our homepage, you'll see some of our more recent blogs, um, some campaigns that we're running that you can take action on. And you'll also find some links to the National River Cleanup website or webpage. Um, and on that webpage, we just share any interesting news um, that's come up within the program. Uh, our photo contest winner is up there now. But we also have um, our staff from the previous year and links that can help you if you're organizing a cleanup or looking to volunteer for a cleanup. Um, so if you're interested in organizing a cleanup, we have um, a web page with a lot of helpful tools. We have uh, some fact sheets. We have some forms. We have some templates that you can use that I'll get into a little bit more later. But what I think is the most helpful for organizers is our organizer's handbook. Um, it's a step-by-step -step guide of how to start a river cleanup from scratch, and it walks you through site selection, recruiting volunteers, how to get the word out about your event, and then how to actually run the cleanup the day of, and any follow-up that you need to do, and kind of loose ends that you need to tie up once you're done. So this handbook is usually where I send people when they reach out and say, hey, I'm new at starting cleanups. I don't really know where to start. It's a great resource to have, um, and it's really, really comprehensive. So once you've read that handbook, um, some light reading, you can go through and uh, register an event on our site. Um, there's a tab on the main National River Cleanup page where you can register your cleanup. And we have a form that asks you a few questions about uh, how many sites there are, uh, how many trash bags you need, um, some basic time and date information. So then we can post your cleanup to our River Cleanup map. And that's how volunteers are able to find your event. Um, the really big draw for a lot of organizers, especially of smaller groups, um, is that we can provide trash bags for free to your river cleanup event. So as long as you submit a registration form four weeks out, uh, we're able to guarantee delivery and help uh, eliminate some of the costs of running your cleanup event, because really we just want to make it easier for you all. So here's another screenshot from the form. You can drag a little pin and show where your event's happening so volunteers can look in their geographic area and find you pretty easily. So the logistics are taken care of. You have your cleanup site in mind. You've registered. The trash bags are on the way. But you still have a lot of other questions on your mind of how to kind of make this event more of a community-based event. So something that's really important and comes up a lot when I talk with organizers is finding support for their events. We're able to provide the free trash bags, but there's still a lot of other costs if you're looking to make this uh, kind of a bigger event and you want to be able to provide supplies to your community 
or turn it into a little bit more of a celebration so that volunteers get like lunch or get a t-shirt. And that's where uh, corporate sponsors really come in and play a big role. So <clears throat> I'm sure if any of you have organized an event before, you know the importance of corporate sponsors. Uh, but you also understand the importance of recognition. Um, and so on the screen, I have a couple pictures. One is of a flyer we put together for an event we did back in May. Um, as you can see at the bottom, we have all of our uh, corporate sponsors listed down there. But we also like to, um, aside from acknowledging our corporate sponsors for individual events, like to acknowledge our uh, year-long sponsors who help support our program. And so you can see on the right we have our American Rivers National River Cleanup Trash Bags, and we have some of our corporate sponsor logos down on those bags. So it's a great way to kind of get the word out. Um, corporate sponsors don't seem to mind that their name is on a trash bag. <laughs> um, and we order about 100,000 of them every year. So it's a really great way for these groups to get exposure. Um, some other great places where we like to give recognition are on our banners or signage. Um, if you're a government agency and you have like an adopt a highway program or something similar, um, you can put up a little sign or a plaque to acknowledge your corporate sponsors. And another great way is when you promote your event through your news sources, giving a shout out to the companies who are making it possible. Um, and from my experience, a lot of local groups like local food companies or local pharmacies are pretty happy to get on board and help support these local efforts. Uh, one of the big things is just remembering to ask. So some of you might be a little bit shy, but don't be hesitant to reach out in your community and ask for these donations or ask for partnership opportunities, because a lot of companies are excited to have their name associated with uh, events like cleanup. So you have the corporate support. You need to get the word out. How do you share information about your event, and how do you get people excited about it and want to come out? So our National River Cleanup webpage on the American Rivers website has a whole section about promoting your event. And we have several templates and tools that can help you, um, like a customizable press release, um, a customizable email that you can send out to reporters. We just try and make it really simple and straightforward for these organizers uh, to reach out within their community. And also by registering your cleanup on our website, it helps boost um, the search results. Like if you type in Google the name of your cleanup and you've registered with us, uh, that link will generally show up pretty close to the top. So that's a really helpful resource to have since we're a national stage. We can give you guys uh, a little shout out and draw a little more attention to your event. But another great way, aside from just uh, reaching out with press releases and putting your logo on our, uh, or your event on our website, is running some kind of contest or competition or game or celebration alongside your cleanup. Um, with our cleanup last month in Austin, Texas, we had um, great partners and we were able to throw a party at Yeti Cooler's store afterward. Um, and we had a giveaway with some coolers and it was just a really fun way to engage folks. Um, but some of the pictures you'll see on the screen are from one of our other partners, uh, the Red River Cleanup. And they ran a little contest. They had a local man in their community who had competed on Survivor, the TV show. And so for their cleanup, he hid a trash necklace immunity idol. And whoever found the trash necklace while cleaning up won a kayak from a local outdoor retailer. So there's a lot of really creative ideas, a lot of fun things. I've seen a lot of. Um, trophies made out of trash. Just really get creative and people will get excited about your cleanup. Another great way to get the word out and help bring in volunteers is using social media. I know this has become such a thing in the past uh, 10, 15 years is being able to promote your event online and get people excited that way. So some of the ways that you can promote your event are really simple and straightforward, like using Facebook events. Um, if your organization has a Facebook page, you can set up an event fairly easily, put all the event details, and then people can respond if they're going or if they're interested. And so on the screen right now is a screenshot of our Austin, Texas cleanup that we did earlier this month. And when we first posted it, we had about 12 people going and 74 interested. So not great. But we ended up doing some targeted 
uh, post and marketing with some of our sponsors. And by uh, the time of the event, we had about 142 who went to the event, and that number was fairly accurate with uh, the registration we had on the day of. And we had about 1,000 interested. So even though these 1,000 volunteers didn't show up necessarily, they saw the event, they saw our name, they were interested, and they'll keep us in mind in uh, future years and hopefully come out to future events. So it's just a really great tool to get people signed up and to get a little more exposure for your events. Um, I also encourage you to use Twitter and Instagram because those are really uh, great assets and kind of tend to attract different audiences. So you can really spread uh, the word through using those resources. We also started last year a virtual landfill. Um, and how this works is when people go out and do their cleanups or pick up 25 pieces of trash in 25 days, they use the hashtag river cleanup, and it automatically fills into our virtual landfill. Um, we use a program called Juicer. Um, I encourage you guys to check it out if you're curious. But we're able to pull um, in these posts from Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and share photos from people's cleanups on our website. So it's a great way to keep the conversation going. It's a great way to see what people are up to and for people who are posting their pictures to check out what other people across the country are doing. So it's just a really great way to use social media um, to kind of promote your event. Another great tool to uh, kind of get people more engaged in their communities using cleanups is by building a policy uh, platform, so to speak, around your cleanup event. So a lot of people want to see change in their communities. They want to see trash come out of rivers or on riverside lands. And they're disheartened by the number of bags or bottles that they're finding or styrofoam. Um, and so one success story is from our uh, DC cleanup that we used, that we um, held last year. Uh, we were along the Anacostia River and one of its tributaries, the Watts Branch. And uh, in DC, they have implemented a bag tax so if you want a plastic bag at a grocery store, you have to pay five cents. And if you have your own bag, you get a discount of five cents. So five cents can go a long way. Um, after they implemented the bag tax, we did this cleanup, and we found very, very few plastic bags. And mostly what we did find was plastic uh, bottles and cans. Um, some of you can probably see in the picture, there's a few women in the river with um, just countless, countless bottles. And so uh, the group we were working with, Anacostia Watershed Society, was working on getting a uh, bottle return system adopted in Maryland to help reduce the number of bottles that go into the river. So if you're able to do these cleanups and tally your data results um, and bring it back to your local decision makers, it can go a long way. Um, and these kinds of cleanups can also be really helpful to educate the public about trash and pollution is issues. So it's not only getting the trash out, but helping change people's behavior so that when they do go to the grocery store, maybe they bring their own reusable bag or they don't drink bottled water and they get some from the tap. So you have this great cleanup event. You're making changes in your community. How do you get volunteers to come out to this event? Aside from promoting the event or having kind of like a contest or some kind of game, how can you make sure that cleanups that volunteers are coming out to your cleanup and that they continue in the future. Um, and what we really suggest is tapping existing groups. So looking for school groups, community groups, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, any religious uh, groups in your community and telling them about this event. A lot of these groups are interested in getting involved and helping out. Um, they just need to be asked and know about the event. So if you're looking to increase your numbers pretty quickly, make sure you tap into these existing groups because they can usually mobilize pretty quickly and collectively and show up in force. Um, and another great suggestion is to look for groups that have a vested interest in rivers already. So outdoor retailers, um, boat companies, marinas, anyone that's kind of on the river, um, restaurants that have water views. Obviously, they want to have a nice shoreline or uh, Riverside lands to look out on. So having these groups involved in the cleanup and tapping them for volunteers is a great way to kind of boost your numbers 
and get a little more excitement and engagement from the community in your event. So how do you keep these volunteers coming back? And how do you keep them interested year-round? Uh, a lot of people are nervous that volunteers will just come out to their one-time event and then no longer be interested. So how do you keep it exciting? And how do you keep these people going and the conversation going? Um, and what we really strive to do are, is to make cleanups an everyday or everyday event, not to make it a once a year, once a month thing that you go out and help out with and then afterward you're done. Just trying to make it more of a daily uh, occurrence and keep it top of mind. So I mentioned before that we ran a pledge and our virtual landfill um, starting last year for the 25th anniversary of National River Cleanup. And these have been really helpful. Um, with our pledge, the map you can see on the left, people could promise to pick up 25 pieces of trash in 25 days. Um, and that way, it's making a river cleanup every day. And it doesn't need to be down at the river. Um, with storm drains and <laughs> parks that are near rivers, it's just really helpful to have people out and about and keeping pollution off uh, out of the river and trash off their streets. So we've just really tried to promote that messaging that a river cleanup doesn't necessarily need to be in or on a river, that you can make a difference every day, and that you can build these behaviors into your routine. So another great way to keep the conversation going is to uh, incorporate cleanups into other work that your group is doing. So if you're a nonprofit who has really expensive conservation programs, maybe you can run a cleanup at one of your sites. Um, where you're doing like a meadow restoration. Or if you run education programs for kids, building river cleanups into the lessons that you're already running can be really effective. So the point of cleanups, as we all know, is to keep trash out of rivers. And sometimes I get the question, well, isn't it bad that we're doing cleanups, we're picking up other people's trash, what we really need is for people to stop polluting. And definitely, I'm working to uh, put myself out of a job. But I think that what a lot of people miss is that uh, trash cleanups or river cleanups are a really important part of preventing trash. Um, the EPA has a good graphic that I like to share that um, talks about how waste can be managed more effectively. Um, and as you'll see, treatment and disposal um, is kind of at the bottom. So really how uh, we're going to prevent trash from making its way into our waterways is reducing the amount that is created in the first place. Um, and while that is the most impactful and while there are these high level uh, processes that need to take place or changes that need to take place to reduce the amount of trash, having people on the ground picking up trash is essential. While it might not be the biggest solution, why while it can seem disheartening to go out to the same site every year and pick up trash, it's part of this larger conversation and it's essential. So having people out there, connecting with their rivers, showing that they care, educating their children and their neighbors that this is what happens when you don't recycle or when you don't make sure that your trash makes it into the bin um, and when you are careless or just drop something along the street that it does have an impact. So creating these connections and these associations um, among people with their rivers is really important in stopping pollution at its source. So um, there's one line that I like, I constantly go back to that you can't love what you don't know. So you have to know your river. You have to get out there. You have to start caring about it. And once you start caring about it and your neighbors start caring about it, they'll start loving it and they'll start um, being a part of this solution. So uh, with that, I'll wrap up. Um, I will want to thank you all for joining me again. Um, and thank you for your interest and your work to keep our rivers clean and healthy. Um, and I'll open it up for questions now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lowell, for your really excellent um, presentation um, and the really interesting information about the National River Cleanup Program and how people can improve cleanups in their community. Um, and so at this point, I wanted to open it up to um, any and all questions that folks have. As a reminder, you have a question box 
in um, your GoToWebinar side panel that I would encourage you um, to ask questions in if you haven't already. Um, we've got a, a couple of questions for you in the queue, Lowell. So um, if anybody else has things that they are thinking of, please feel free to ask them now. Um, so Lowell, one question that, um, that came up was about um, the number of sites that you should have at a specific cleanup. Do you have recommendations about whether or not it makes sense to focus, especially if you're a new cleanup, on just one site, or if it makes more sense to do multiple sites depending on sort of the size of your community? Yeah, that's a great question, and it definitely varies by community. So if you have um, a stretch of river that's only a quarter mile long, but you have 200 people interested in coming out, um, that's going to make for some really quick work. Um, or you could work to expand to multiple sites. Um, we see a lot of value in not stretching ourselves too thin. So kind of adjusting the number of sites based on attendance and kind of how big each site is. So that's not a hard and fast answer, but it really does depend on where you are, how easy it is to access the river um, and the stretch that you're working on and how many people you have involved. Great. Thanks, Lowell. Um, another question building off of sort of that same idea is um, the idea of hosting multiple cleanups in one year. Do you, have you, you know, seen success with either national river cleanup events or events that you um, have seen across the country on the number of events that um, communities are able to host per year? Yeah, so it, again, really varies by community, but I do have a few groups who are part of National River Cleanup, and they have uh, teams that go out every month and clean up um, either the same stretch of river or they go out and find a new stretch, and they have this core group of really committed volunteers who are able to go out every month um, and make a big difference. So I would say if you have interest, definitely go for it. Um, and obviously, if you have manpower at your office to coordinate all these events. But um, the more events that you do, the easier it gets. So if you have um, people who are really anxious to get out there and want to clean up, I would definitely recommend making it, it more of a monthly occurrence or bi-monthly. Great. Thanks, Lowell. Um, switching topics a little bit, um, one question is about the idea of safety and how you communicate safety, whether it's um, a land-based cleanup or whether you're in boats. Yeah, great question. And that's something that we really stress at all of our cleanup events. Um, we really want people to have fun, and we really want people to be safe. And we think those two are very connected. So if we're running a or any cleanup, we have a waiver that we have volunteers sign that's acknowledging the risk that they're taking. But we also do a safety briefing before every cleanup, where we kind of run through how the day is going to go, um, any safety concerns they need to take into consideration, like if there's a steep bank, or if we're expecting a lot of glass to be found, or a lot of sharp items, um, or a lot of heavy items like tires. We'll give people a warning and we'll tell them to uh, work in pairs or work in groups to definitely call over an organizer if they're uncomfortable picking anything up. Um, and we really just stress them, stress that they should um, communicate really openly and freely and um, that we're there to help them and to help keep them safe. Um, and then also with boat-based cleanups, we usually will have a separate boat safety briefing. Um, if we're working with like an outdoor retailer, we'll have them come in and give their um, input and make sure that everyone has um, uh, life jackets and that they're comfortable in a boat. Um, or if they're not, that they're paired up with someone who is so that everyone has a safe and fun time on the water. Excellent. Thanks, Lowell. Um, one last question as it's getting um, just before the 11.30 time here in the mountain time zone, um, is how do you suggest working with local communities on trash pickup? Yes, that is another big question. So a lot of times these cleanups happen, there's all these bags of trash, and there's not always a dumpster or something nearby for people to use. So um, I really encourage groups to reach out to their local city or town government to see if they can arrange for a trash pickup. And a lot of times the Parks and Rec Department will be really on board to help out. Um, but sometimes 
In the past, we've even just had to get a pickup truck and load all the trash in there. So you have to be a little creative sometimes, but uh, local cities or local waste management companies are usually pretty happy to help out um, if they um, are able to, on that day, uh, come around. They'll have you pile the trash in a convenient location, and it kind of works out for everyone involved. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lowell. Um, and it is just 11.30, so I wanted to um, put a pause on any questions um, that we have that have not yet been answered. Um, as a reminder, a transcript of all of the questions and answers will be available along with the recorded webinar um, this Friday, May 26th, on the Blue Trails Guide blog, bluetrailsguide.org backslash blog. So please, um, Look out for an email from me or check the Blue Trails Guide blog um, for more information. I'd like to thank Lowell George again for such an amazing presentation and thank all of you for your participation um, in our May webinar. As a, a quick note, um, we are taking a pause um, in our webinar series for the month of June. Um, and instead of a webinar, we will be promoting um, a number of our partners webinar series um, that are happening in the month of June, as well as sending out a survey um, to all of our uh, past webinar participants on what topics people are most interested in hearing more about uh, as we move into um, the later half of 2017 and into 2018. So stay tuned for an email um, for that. And I look forward to seeing you all back on our webinar series in July. So thank you again, Lowell, for a great presentation. And thank all of you for um, participating with us uh, on this lovely Tuesday. So have a great rest of your day. And I will see you guys all soon. Thank you.